what we want to introduce you is a is yoga for runners. I mean, as we move through into our mileage, you're going to need yoga for this longer mileage. You've got to recover. You've got to get the body flexible again and ready for the following week's training. So, Kimberly, she doesn't really need much introduction. Sanjay Gupta calls her the, the future of yoga, right? Thank you, Ron. What a great coach you guys have. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, it's funny because, uh, I, I mean, I feel your pain. I've run 13 marathons myself. I was a professional triathlete from 89 to 91. So, you know, I... I, I, can feel, I feel your pain. I've had injuries. You want to, with your forward bends, you want to make sure that your, the back side of your legs are on the ground because that's what you're working on. And if you can't reach your toes, and a lot of people can't, use, use your towel and try to keep the back of your legs on the mat because I, I saw a lot of people like this. So you're not really getting your stretch. You're sort of doing a forward bend, but you're not working what you're supposed to be working. So if you, if you have a towel, use your towel. If you don't have a towel, grab wherever you can, but keep, keep the back of your legs on the mat. Also, when you do a forward bend, I want you to pay attention to something for me. I want you to pay attention to your feet. Lots of times with runners, their feet go in or out, supinating or pronating. So when you're in your forward bend, I want you to make sure your feet are in a neutral position. That'll help with your IT bands. You know, it, it, you'll really notice that. Seated tree, bring your right foot to the inside of your left thigh. Just a tall, deep breath in, exhale. Huh? That doesn't matter. We're going to switch sides. So you, so you feel that. Where, where are you feeling that? Yeah, yeah. And as your hip opens up, your knee will start to fall to the ground. You, know, you, might, you might start here, it's okay. You know, and then eventually it'll re release. And you always want to hold, like with yoga, you want to, I heard people, um, your pace leaders counting. So, I mean, you, you want to hold it at, at least 30 seconds. You know, that's what, it takes a little while for your muscles to release. And then you want to switch, always switch sides. And try to hold it the same amount of time on both sides. I like to take a second, notice the difference. You know, that's, you know, when you start to notice the difference between one side and the other. If you catch it early, you can stop from getting, having an injury. Because you go, wow, my left side. For me, my left side's always been a lot tighter than my right. But it's, it's good to really be aware of your body. Who's talking about groin? You. Yes. This opens up your inner inner thighs. It opens up your hip and then also your lower back. I, mean, I don't know about you, but when I run, my lower back gets a little tight. And then you just sort of lean forward. If this is easy for you, you can walk your hands out in front of you as it gets easier. Knees are way up in the air. Move your feet a little bit further from your body if you want to. Also, you can use your elbows, push your knees down. Okay, good. Good. This one you want to hold for, you know, if you can, you know, 60 seconds, like close to a minute. That's, that's the thing, you know, with yoga, it takes, it does, it takes a little while, you know, to get your body to release. All right, you lay on your back and you bring your right foot on top of your left thigh, and then you reach through, you gra either grab your shin, or if you can't reach your shin, the back of your thigh. Sometimes that you can't even do that, so you'd get a towel. Now, I, I train a lot of professional athletes, and I, this is the pose that I always have all of them do. And this whole routine takes like five minutes, guys. You know, it's like you can, you can do it all the time. And then you just bring your, you know, your knees into your chest and then do an easy spinal twist. So your right knee comes into your chest. And I saw some people doing this. Then you bring your knee across your body. Shoulder blades are on the mat, on the floor. I see a lot of people, their, their knees down and their shoulders up. And it's not, you're not quite getting the, the release in your lower back that, that you should. So when you're doing um, an easy spinal twist, really try to keep your shoulder blades on the mat. It doesn't really uh, matter how far your knee goes down. 
it, you know, you're really focusing and opening your lower back at that point. If you're if you're talking about yoga and holding and holding the pose as opposed to you know doing it for you know a few seconds and then switching and it just it allows you to just be a little more in touch with your body. Okay, I think that's the, that's sort of the difference between yoga and stretching. If you're going to make a a difference between the two, and you really focus obviously on breath. When you're when you are doing the poses, breathing into any tightness and just try to get the body to release. 